Hi and welcome to Spice and Pans. Today we'll be cooking Ding Tai Fung inspired five spice pork chops. So let's start cooking. In collaboration with Pots and Pans Culinary Studio, we are launching an incredible cooking course featuring our loved recipes. Join us in our exclusive local Chinese delight course. Sign up with the link below or scan this QR code. See you there! Now we're going to cut up our pork. I have with me over here 500 grams of boneless pork loin, like this. I'm going to show you how I'm going to take out the membrane over here. Now why do we need to actually remove this membrane? Because this is actually very tough and it will affect the texture when you eat it. So basically for this itself, right, I'm going to cut into three pieces, okay, for the pork chop. So the first cut I'm going to do will be from this side, okay, just do a simple one cut first. I'm going to divide this into three portions. So just cut, don't cut all the way down, okay. When it's about to reach the membrane, we stop like this, okay. Then we turn it to the other side like this. All right, and then using a knife, we just slowly and lightly just slice like this while pulling this part of the pork this way, right? And then we can actually slowly remove the membrane like this. Don't cut all the way down, just lightly pull it out like this, slowly using the knife, moving front and back, slowly get rid of the membrane. There's still a little bit of membrane over here. We'll remove this also in a while. This is how the membrane looks like. Okay, now we remove this part also. Same thing, put it over here like this. Get a good grip and slowly pull or you slowly move your knife forward and backward. Just do it this way and you can remove the membrane like this. So this is the part that's actually very tough. We don't want to use this, we'll throw this away. we we'll put this in the plate aside and we'll now remove this piece of the membrane. Okay, so you just need to slice this off. Be very careful. Once you are done with this, we just need to cut this up. Normally when we buy our boneless pork loin from the wet market, it's actually a quite a small piece, but we want our pork chop to be bigger, right? Because most of the time, they would like to leave a little bit more meat on the ribs so they can sell it as a whole rack of ribs. So what we do is, we'll cut this into half now, okay, and we'll butterfly it. I'll show you how I do this. Put this piece aside. From here, we'll cut about three quarter down. And that's how we butterfly our meat, okay? We'll need to actually flatten this and tenderize this. I'll show you how I do this. To flatten and tenderize this, we'll need a mallet like this. In order not to let the meat splash all over, use a plastic bag, just cover it up like this. We are going to flatten this to approximately 50% more of this size itself. And we want it to have an even thinness or thickness. Start from the center and hammer it towards the outside like this. Don't make it too thin because if it's too thin, then it will not be juicy and we don't want that. Once you are done with one side, we'll turn it to the other side. Continue with the other side. I'll show you how it looks like in a while. So this is how we want it to be. A very nice piece of pork chop with a very nice thickness, so it will be very juicy. Continue with the rest and I'll show you how I marinate them. I've already flattened out my pork chop and now I'll prepare the marinade. In a mixing bowl, add in 50 milliliters of water, 3 tablespoons of light soya sauce, 1 teaspoon of salt, 1 teaspoon of sugar, a few dashes of white pepper, One teaspoon of five spice powder. Two cloves of garlic, 
smashed. Now we we'll mix this all up. You might have to press down a little bit just to make sure that the five spice powder is very well mixed into this liquid marinade that we're making over here. Once you mix this up well, we we'll add in half a teaspoon of baking soda. Now don't use too much baking soda, otherwise your pot will taste a little bit soapy. So just add this in. Mix it up well again. Once this mix up well, we we'll add in our pork. Add in all your pork. Now normally I like to use my hand to mix this up well to make sure that the marinade really gets into the pork. So our pork will be really juicy, flavorful and tender. Keep mixing them up for approximately a minute or so to make sure that they are well coated. And when you have mixed them up well, we'll add in our corn flour. Add in two tablespoons of corn flour. The corn flour is to coat the protein or the pork so that later when we deep fry them, it will still remain very juicy. Okay, once you're done with this, We'll leave this in the fridge and marinate them for at least an hour. I'll see you back in a while. We have marinated the pork for about one to two hours already. Now we need to deep fry them. Heat up your wok, heat up your oil. I'm using medium heat at this moment. We need to test the oil whether it's hot enough or not. Using a bamboo chopstick or a bamboo skewer, place it inside the oil. Now if you see bubbles rising up like this, right, small bubbles rising up like this, that means the oil is hot enough. We'll now add in our pork chop. Don't overcrowd the pan. Right, slowly place it in. I'm just going to put two pieces in at one time. Let it slowly cook. We just need to sort of brown them. Let it cook for a while before you turn them over. They will cook in approximately three, four minutes time around there. And you have very tender and juicy pork chops. Now we'll flip them over. Just slowly cook them. Remember, don't turn up the heat too high. Otherwise, you'll burn them and the inside will not be cooked. The pork is not too thick and we have tenderized them, so do not worry. The pork will be cooked quite easily. If you want to pan fry them, you can. But pan frying will dry the pork chop quite fast. And for this particular dish, I will actually recommend you to deep fry them. How do you know whether your pork chops are done already? Now, it's actually very simple. When you push the pork chop down a little bit, you can actually feel that it's hardening up. There's quite a fair bit of texture difference when it's raw. So when you feel that it's hardening up, that means it's cooking or will be cooked very, very soon. Look at how beautiful the color is. Now as you can see, the pork chop are brown already. I'm going to turn the heat up to medium high so that the oil will not be trapped in them. I'm just going to cook this for another minute or so. Beautiful. The pork chop are now done. I'll remove them from oil. We'll leave them for about five minutes before we cut them so that the juice will remain inside the pork chop. I'll continue with the next batch. And after this, we'll have our lunch. And now the dish is done, let's have a taste. Oh, smells simply heavenly. Very, very nice five spice smell. The fragrance is so good. 10 juicy and super flavorful. Paired with the Ting Tai Fong inspired egg fried rice, this is Jie Pei. Very, very good together. And if you want to know how to cook the fried rice, I'll leave the link in the description box below. Just click on it and you can have a dish like this. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like our video. Do click like on our video and do subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and now it's your turn to cook. See you. Bye-bye. Wow, mm.